on the 15th of September, a group of black businessmen like publisher R.H. Boyd, lawyer James C. Napier, and funeral home director Preston Taylor started a rival on black-owned public transportation system, the Union Transportation Company. It provided an alternative to riding the national street parks. After a year of boycott, Union Transportation Company was sabotaged and had to suspend its services, and the streetcars in Nashville remained segregated. The remarkable Jack Macon was owned by Murray County resident William H. Macon. When Jack showed a propensity for healing the sick in the lane, William would send him out to take some on the white uh, patients. Even though it was illegal for slaves to practice medicine, Jack had a low of clientele. In 1831, Jack's white patients petitioned the state government to find a way to let them practice medicine without breaking the law. Of course, it failed. One petitioner wrote, he had a Negro man who was inflicted with pain for two months, and the best doctors in Columbia could not heal him. He then called on Dr. Jack, and Jack produced a cure in two weeks. There's no record of him ever being a free man, but the National Cemetery, City Cemetery states that Jack died a free man of color in 1860 at the age of 80. From at least the early 1830s to 1860, Sarah Estelle sold ice cream to Nashvillians. Ice cream in the 1830s was a fancy, a delicacy reserved for statesmen, politicians, and other blue buds who could afford it. But there's an interesting fact hidden about Sarah Estelle. She was extremely well off. Sarah could afford to buy her steady supply of ice in Nashville, and this is the days before electricity. By 1959, she was running a boarding house and a catering service at 89 North Cherry, which is now 4th Avenue. And of course, she served ice cream. Today, there's a historical marker downtown on 4th Avenue to recognize Sarah's accomplishments. Nashville is currently the home of four historically black colleges. We have Tennessee State, this University, my school, the Air <laughs> Medical College, and American Baptist College, but we live among the ghosts of two other black historical colleges. One was Roger Williams University, a Baptist college that primarily focused on the education of preachers and stood where Peabody College at Vanderbilt now stands. As that part of town became more affluent and white, Roger Williams began having more and more troubles, mysterious problems, a rash of bullets flying through the windows and two devastating fires. Mm. The college sold his land to Peabody Normal College, and Rogers Williams survived a couple more decades on White's Creek Pike, but eventually became part of Lamont Owen College in Memphis. The second college was Central Tennessee College, later known as Walden College, a Methodist college just off of Bay Street, founded in 1865. At 18, in 1876, the college opened the first medical school in the South, for African Americans. It was the origins for Meharry Medical College. Central Tennessee also trained lawyers, pharmacists, dentists, and nurses. In 1922, to save money, it moved to a site off Murfreesboro Road, where Tobacco Nazarene College sits today. And then a few short years later, it folded. And lastly, there's a persistent myth of Southern history that a slave who was happy because of his enslavement. There are thus two historic versions of Alfred, Andrew Jackson's most trusted slave. The white fantasy version is of Alfred, often cited as an example of a good slave. He was loyal, industrious, bright, trustworthy, and loving to his owners. Alfred practically ran the hermitage and took care of the property up until his death. When people tried to argue that slavery wasn't all bad, 
the version of Alfred is kind of a slave that they would point to and say someone who thrived in the institution. But in real life, Alfred was greatly unhappy. Even when others would point out that he had a kind master, a pleasant home, the respect of peers and his owner, no question about it, his lot of life was good. But whenever people try to argue that slaves didn't have it so bad, I want you all to remember Alfred's last words. How would you like to be a slave? This ministry moment has been brought to you by the Larry A. Thompson Ministry. Our team lead is Anthony McLean, and we are extending an invitation to you to visit our interactive African American Living History Museum next Sunday after the 11 o'clock service in the Fellowship Hall. There you will hear and learn about many more untold stories of accomplishments and contributions of African Americans in Nashville and in the United States. The Larrys is a group of uh, members who love history, and we're always looking for new members, so please come join us. Uh, so please consider to be a part of our ministry. Thank you. <laughs>